But the guy started with nothing, and here's how he did it. Listen to me now. The reason I look for him as a role model is because he made all his money in the worst of times. He made all his money when people were going through the equivalent of the deepest recession or depression possible. His whole belief was, and this is different than almost anybody else you see around you, was pessimism was the secret to success. <laughs> that what he wanted to do was make money when people were most pessimistic. Because when people are optimistic, they want you to pay for their house a huge sum of money. But as they start getting more and more pessimistic, where pretty soon they think they can never, the house is the worst thing to have, they'll virtually give you the house. They'll virtually give you the business. And so he made all his money starting in World War II. When the war broke out, when Hitler invaded over in Europe, he took all the money he had and borrowed a total of money of $10,000, a total amount. He bought with $10,000 every stock on the New York Stock Exchange that was $1 or less that he thought might be useful, including some companies that look like they're going to be bankrupt. But he did it when people were the most pessimistic. Because if you recall, it looked like Hitler was going to take over. It didn't look like we were all going to be the winners. It looked like Hitler was going to dominate. And when people were that scared, they would give up anything they had just to get a little bit back. And so he bought all the stock that eventually made him a multi-billionaire. He became a billionaire because after things changed, after the war, just five years later, and the economy started to surge, everything changed for him. Where do you think he invested next after World War II? What was a country that was pummeled, that was down, the factories were basically turned into mud? Japan. You could buy things for pennies in Japan that would have cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars before, and he did. When everyone was most pessimistic, he went and did well. And then he sold when the 80s surged and when everybody thought Japan was the greatest country on earth and had the biggest businesses he sold and made his maximum profit when people were overly optimistic. He did the same thing down in South America when inflation went crazy. This man spent his entire life basically having a strategy of how to succeed when everybody else was scared. I tell you that because he's a role model. What he did, how he did it, it's all in writing, it's crystal clear. You could do the same. But you won't be able to do it when you're telling yourself the sky is falling and it's over. When you see it worse than it is, you'll just give up. You won't do it if you don't tell yourself the truth is, you know what, this system isn't working. I got to do something. I got to change my finances. I got to change my job. I got to reach. If you don't tell yourself the truth and deal with the truth, the real truth, nothing's going to happen. You won't ever even think about a guy like John Templeton if you don't have a vision that says, I don't care how the environment is, I'm going to find a way to do well. And you won't do well unless you get a strategy based on a role model who's really done it. My whole thing is this. If anybody has something you want, they aren't lucky. They did something. If you model them, if you take similar steps, you can produce a similar result. Make sense? And then finally, the fifth step, look, if you're in a situation where you see it as is but not worse than it is, if you've told yourself the truth and you dealt the cards you're dealt with and just decided you're going to change it and you're willing to do what's necessary, if you put yourself in a place where you got a new vision and you've gotten yourself strong, if you've got a role model and you've got some strategy and you've got yourself into action, step five is give much more than you expect to receive. Simple as that sounds, if you find a way to meet people's needs in business, in an intimate relationship, meeting your kids' needs, anybody's needs, the whole game changes. What happened here when all of a sudden, you know, Melissa finds herself coming home and all of a sudden she finds out that while she's gone, her kids now don't want to talk to her, her boys, her husband has had an affair. Well, none of that could change if she would have just said, you know what? My whole life is over. I'm done. And oh, by the way, I've just lost my career too because while I'm busy trying to deal with my family, I didn't finish the record, so I lose my record deal. And oh, by the way, we don't have any financial stability. Now we're losing our house. If that family would have just said it's over, if Melissa or Rick either just said it's over, it would have been over. But they told themselves the truth. We got severe problems here. But they didn't make it worse than it was. They didn't say we can't turn it around. And then they got to the truth, the truth of the infidelity the truth of her addiction to going after fame instead of being a mom, the truth that neither one of them had been really competent at parents and had not given the energy to the kids that they deserved. The truth, is, the truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. <laughs> you know, the truth will, it doesn't feel good, but not feeling good is sometimes is where you get your drive to change things. They, they started looking around and said, we don't have the skill to even manage our house, much less our finances. We gotta do something different. We got to focus on our kids. We got to focus on turning things around. We got to turn our relationship around. But that wouldn't have worked unless they got a vision of starting to see, you know, it could happen. And that's what I help them with. I help them get to the truth. 
I helped them to stop over-exaggerating. I got them to a place where they got to see that this relationship could be back alive and passionate and that these kids deserve both their parents and that she really could be a great mom and that maybe in the end she could even still have her singing career and enjoy it too, that she didn't have to give it all up. And I'm really proud of her. She did it because she found a role model. She got a vision, but she got a full role model. And the man that she works with today is a man that sold, I think now, 5 million or 10 million records. And most people outside the country business don't know his name. He's her mentor now. He's made music with, you know, Willie Nelson, with just about anybody you can imagine in the business. And he's done it for all these years, but he's never left the central part of Texas because that's where his family is. And Melissa's had offers to go to Sony, Sony Red. She walked away because they said, you're going to have to do these things without your family. She found out what was most important, and she made the decisions that made, met her needs to be a great mom. When you fight life and go, I should be a singer, not a mom, and you got five kids, you got a problem. When you fight life and say, you know, the economy should be different, you're going to be stressed. Deal with what is, without exaggeration, with total honesty, dealing with the cards, coming up with a vision, finding yourself a role model that shows your strategy, work your tail off, give, 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 keep changing your approach, and you can get where you want to go. Make sense? Now, that might sound like a lot. So to get you started, here's what I'd like you to do for this session. Start out, if you want, by taking a big crisis or problem you have and going through these steps, saying, okay, what's really true? And let me exaggerate, let me stop the exaggeration. Let me not make it worse than it is. Just let's define what's true. Let's stop the story. Just here's what it is. We got this much financial challenge. We got this physical challenge, whatever it is. And then you can go to step two. All right, let's find out the truth. Let's get the details. Let's get the details and figure out what we're going to do. And then here's where we're going to go. This is where we're going to eventually get to. It might take us longer to get where we want to go, but we're going to get here. Who's done it that we can model, that we can follow the steps in, who can coach us? And let's just work our tail off and change every day. But to give you a quick jump, sometimes when you're in the middle of crisis or a crisis, multiple crises, lots of things going on simultaneously, it feels a bit overwhelming. So, and you might not know a role model. You might say, Tony, I don't know who. Well, not hard in the internet these days to find role models or come to an event. You know, I can promise you we can show you plenty of role models. This is what I do for a living. But what you can do right away is you can model yourself. Think about it. Almost everyone alive has been through more than one tough, tough time, crisis or multi-crises where you're having a problem financially and you're having a problem with your family and you're having a health problem all simultaneously. Those are the intense ones, right? But if you're standing still today, most of us have found a way to get through it. And if you don't, you know someone who went through a tough time, a grandmother, an aunt, an uncle, somebody. The greatest way to make that change happen when you break out of a, you know, break through, you break out of a problem, you break out of a crisis, is model yourself. So we have five questions when you click on this link. And you can do it by video so you can see yourself and you can share it with other people or you can type in the answer. I'll tell you in advance what they are and then when I'm done here, I want you to do it right away if you would. The first question is, what's been one of the toughest times in your life? What's been one of the toughest times in your life that you did get through? Maybe it was a financial situation. Maybe it was a career situation. Again, maybe it was an intimate relationship where you were crushed. You thought you could never make it through all the pain you went through there. You know, maybe it was a physical challenge, a health challenge. Maybe it was a lack of confidence or ability. I don't know what it was, but what was a just incredibly tough time that you did make it through? And, and you're just going to jot it down. Or you can do it in the video and just tell us. Because you're not only going to get this answer, but we're going to create a community of people who will be role models, people that have been through hell and back, saying, here's where I was, here's what I got through, here's what shifted my life, here's what you can do. And we're creating this community as our gift to you so that this isn't just a discussion that's one way. We really I want to do is start a conversation with you where we can help each other. So that first question is, what's a, what's a crisis? What's a challenge? What's a tough situation you eventually made through, but it really was difficult for you? Second question, when you go back and you think about that situation, what pulled you through? What pulled you through that situation? What did, you, what did you learn? What distinction? Or did you get a strategy? Or was it a belief? Or did you meet someone who helped you? Or was it just somehow you clicked into your faith and you kicked yourself into gear? What pulled you through those tough times? Was it a person? Was it a place? Was it an idea? Was it a distinction? Was it a belief? What was it? Share it with us. Type it down or tell us from your heart what it really was. Third question is just real quick. It's just for contrast. And the third question is, what was your life like before the crisis? Like right before all hell broke loose? 
Usually you'll say, oh, my life was so great, but when you go back and look at it, was it so great? Was it wonderful? Just out of curiosity, right before all hell broke loose, third question is, what was your life like right before it? And then the fourth question, what'd you do? What did you do to go from where you were to where you are today? What did you do to get over that situation? What did you do to get through that situation? What did you do to turn it around? What action did you take? Who did you go learn from? What skill did you go get? What, what did you physically do? Kind of give us the description of what you did because we all want to know because you can provide us a pathway. You may have been through a crisis that someone else is going through right now and they can learn from you because they can learn the shortcut. And finally, the fifth question, maybe the most important one besides what pulled you through, and the fifth one is, how is your life actually better today because you went through this crisis? Whatever the crisis was, how are you stronger or are you more compassionate because you felt that suffering, you don't want anybody else to feel it? Or are you more hopeful because you know you made it through that so you can make it through other things? Or are you in a situation where you've got a skill today that you didn't have and wouldn't have had if it wasn't for that situation that made you have to grow? Or are you just happier today? because you have a contrast of what life could be like, and so now you appreciate the simple moments. How are you better mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, or spiritually today because you went through the crisis? Even though you wouldn't want to go through it again, you don't want anybody else to go through it, how did it actually serve you in the end? I think if you answer these five questions, you don't need to remember them. I said them to kind of trigger you thinking. All you do is type in the answer, or you take the instructions and click on the video and go, okay, toughest time of my life. There have been so many. But I'd say when I went through this divorce, or I'd say when I was told I had this tumor, or I'd say when they told me this company was going to go bankrupt, or whatever it was. Second question, what pulled me through? God, I don't know, I guess a combination of things. One was this belief that somehow everything in life happens for a reason and a purpose. And even though I hate this, something must be calling me to grow. Or I'll tell you what it was. It was a friend that sat me down and said, man, you're going through hell, but when you're in the middle of hell, when you're, when you're pushing through hell, just keep pushing, just keep going through it, man. I've been there. And he gave me this plan, or he gave me this strategy, or he told me, you know, this problem won't last forever. Trust me, I know it feels like it's the end of the world, but 10 years from now, you and I will be sitting here, and you'll be here with your children, and you'll be here with your wife, and we'll be talking about those tough days, and we'll actually smile and laugh about them, and be so proud we made it through it together. Or you might say, what got me through it was prayer, or my faith in God, or what got me through it was just massive action. You know, what pulled you through? Just tell us. We all want to hear. We all need to know. And there's lots of ways to get through hell, isn't there? There's lots of ways to get through a crisis. There's so many ways. That's what I want people to get. So when you're done with this on the website, you will give in something. Because a community is not just a place you go get stuff, right? It's a place you give. And the more you know, authentic you can be and honest from your heart, the more other people will see and be touched. You know, what was it like before? Oh my God, I was on top of the mountain. You know, what did you do? Here's what I did. You know, I told myself the truth. I went and got this new education. I went and started talking to people each day. I, whatever you did. How's your life better today? Um, there's a phrase, you know, be humble or be humbled. You know, I have a different level of humility because I know you know, that as good as I may think I may be, that situation reminded me that life is not just about me, it's about we. Or, gosh, because of that, I love my wife so much because we made it through that situation together. Or because of that, man, I'm so much stronger financially, I'm on top of things, I don't let anybody spend. Whatever it is, tell us how your life's better, okay? I don't know how long the session was. Again, there's no script here, baby. I just wanna work with you heart to heart to say one thing. If you wanna break through, you have to make new decisions. New choices create a new life. The only thing stopping you is some limiting belief, some belief about how life should be different or you should be different. Deal with life the way it is. Tell yourself the absolute truth. Don't make it worse than it is. Tell yourself the truth, deal with it. Get a vision, get strong, get a strategy, get a role model with a strategy and get into action and then put your focus on taking action every day. Giving, 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 change your approach, you will get there. Go to the power of crisis right now, click in, Give us your message and the answers to five and look at other people. You'll find people have been through things you can't imagine. A woman talking about how one day she was home and a man came in and to try and save her children from being hurt, she had to let her, him rape her right in front of her kids. And when her, father, when her husband found out, rather, he came home, he was so upset he left her. 
and then she developed cancer. I mean, you'll, you'll see some stories here that'll blow your mind. And today she's the most happy, incredible woman and she's helping other people who have cancer to get through it. She's healthy and strong. Her kids are strong. We need those kinds of role models. So whether your story is little or big, there is no little or big. We all need a pathway of power and this will be a gift to yourself because it will activate your resources and it'll be a gift to other people as well. So that's our session. The power of decision, the power of choice, how to face a crisis and turn around and, it may not sound like a, you know, rocket science, it's not. It's just called the truth, and the truth will set you free, as they say. So live strong and live with passion.